Good morning to everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live, and good morning once again to everyone in the room. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this service. Let's see. Oh, and I know we have a special announcement from Reverend David Dewhurst. He will be making his way up here shortly. He has a message from Reverend Marsha Lehman that he would like to share with all of us. So he's coming right now. Give him just a second. Oh, that's beautiful. I know, right? Oh, that's beautiful. I heard that, Lisa. <laughs> the pandemic may have hit us, but I still remember my puns. Reverend Marsha Lehman, as most of you know, has been a minister at the center for quite a long time. She moved out to Friday Harbor, which is offshore from Seattle. However, she's still an active minister in our center. She wanted to celebrate our grand opening by presenting us with this wonderful bouquet of flowers. So I would like to present it to the Reverend Dr. Jesse Jennings, who will be representing Creative Life Spiritual Center. This is gorgeous. Thank you, Marsha. Marsha's yeah. watching right now. You see her emoji. Yes, she is. Thank you, Marsha. We truly appreciate it. That's beautiful. Oh, Thank you so much. We should put this in a place of honor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put it up here. Perfect. Thank you, David, and thank you, Marsha. We really appreciate that. And now with that... We come to our inner healing time. I invite everyone to just take a few deep breaths. Relax your body and your mind. As you breathe in, cool, calm air. Breathe out all that no longer serves you. Allow your body to be still. Allow your mind to be present. And be here now. Universal love enfolds me. Universal wisdom inspires me. Universal spirit enlightens me. Universal power encircles me. I am one and all is well. As we begin the inner healing process, let me invite you to relax in quiet confidence, opening yourself to the miracle working higher power. Now symbolize the unity of your thinking and feeling nature by touching your chest with your right hand and let my words act as your own for your own inner healing, acceptance, and receptivity. I acknowledge that there is a power, intelligence, and wisdom greater than my own. I am in the midst of it, and it is in the midst of me, sensitive and responsive to my every thought, word, action, and feeling. I now make this true for myself by stating aloud, I acknowledge. Acknowledging the higher power working through my life I admit that I am personally responsible for solving my own problems while being guided and assisted by something greater than myself. As I am ready to surrender the conflicts of my ego to the wisdom of the infinite presence, I simply speak these words, I surrender. Knowing that forgiveness is the key to unconditional love and the feeling of heaven, I now unconditionally forgive anyone and everyone who has ever injured me in any way 
real, or imagined. And I now forgive myself for all of my mistaken judgments and their resulting actions. From my deepest level of understanding, I now say, I forgive. Realizing that I continually experience the effects of my own thinking, I now choose to allow this higher power to recreate me deeply, filling my mind with thoughts that are only positive, constructive, loving, and beautiful. I call upon this divine inflow by stating aloud, I choose. I now center upon that one special idea that I'm willing to accept as real for me in this coming week. In visualizing that idea as already acted upon and brought to pass, in seeing my idea become a fact of my experience, I enjoy the happiness and peace of my thought fulfilled and gratefully speak these words, I accept. I accept. Knowing that I have an everlasting place in the midst of the power that sustains all creation, as well as the support of all those around me, I allow myself to relax in the peace of fulfillment and gratitude and say, I release. I release. Now, in my mind's eye, I envision the presence of someone near and dear to me. This can be a friend, a family member, a teacher or mentor, someone who has touched my life in deep and loving ways. Someone who may not be physically present with me in the room this morning. I turn toward that image in my mind's eye and say, I'm grateful for the good in your life. I'm grateful for the good in your life. Now I open my eyes, turn to the world around me, and joyfully speak to anyone sitting next to me in the room or virtually on this broadcast and share in gratitude and confidence in saying, I'm grateful for the good in your life. I'm grateful for the good in your life. I don't know why I even have this. I don't need notes. But they're a crutch. They're a nice crutch. Well, first of all, that was really weird when we had the uh, inner healing experience. And I heard, I acknowledge. <laughs> See, we've been doing that for 16 months with just like the five or six of us. And I really don't know where to begin today. And I won't know where to end. This is not your ordinary science of mind talk. For that, you'll want to be here next week. Because we've got some business to cover first about what's transpired in the last 16 months. And some people to thank, you know. And... I've been going over this. This is the, most, the trickiest part of all of this is not to forget anybody and to put them in the right order. And there is no right order. But somebody I forget to thank on camera, and you've heard this, you've heard voices coming out of, out of the others, you know, the five or six others who are here. Jeffrey Oshman. Yeah. Every Sunday, 16 months, 80 mile round trip, he's here before anybody, he's here after everybody, he's here rehearsing the musicians. This guy is absolutely amazing. Then there are the musicians, many of whom are here today, some more often than others. Principally, I've got to call out Melody and Kenzie Berryman. Yes. And Brian Schwanitz. Now, on the uh, 15th of March, in the, in the year of our textbook, 20, no, in, the, in the year of Ernest 2020, on the 15th of March, I was out of town uh, speaking at another center, and that, that went sideways that weekend, because they shut down the state I was in, basically and came pretty close to shutting down the airport. Uh, but on that Sunday, when I was speaking elsewhere, 
Reverend Lisa Ryan was to give her first ever Sunday talk, which if you don't, aren't cognizant of it, this is a huge big deal for ministers. Because we come into this, we don't have a five-year gig. You know, we come into this, and this is a lifetime commitment that we make. And this was the first time for her to speak on this stage to you on a Sunday. And so we were talking by phone all the weekend running up to that about what was going on. And this was closing down, and that was shutting down, and everything else. We had also decided to start going to Facebook Live. But we were going to wait on that till I got back. And Lisa said, no. Lisa said, I'll do this so that, you know, the people who don't feel comfortable being here, and we made the decision right then that we were going to close the center down the following day, as we did. She said, the people who aren't here, they should be able to see the service. This woman gave her first talk ever as a minister on Facebook Live to the universe (laughs) and never batted an eye about it. Then she's been here every Sunday, as has Danielle. Danielle had to miss a Sunday back around Christmas because, why? It was Christmas. <laughs> she had family. They had something else to do. She apologized, and I'll make it up to you, and I can't be there. And on that Sunday, when we went live, she's moderating the comments from her vacation at Christmas. These two. Danielle Mercadell, Reverend Lisa Ryan. Bravo. And I'll save the shyest one for last. Actually, he's not last. Everybody else is is going to be thanked in a general way, but I have to thank Sean Connolly. Because, because. Sean is our maintenance guru. He's not on Facebook Live. You don't see him up here talking about what he's done. But this place, this almost seven acre campus that we have, you know, he's taking care of every, we had a, you remember the winter storm? Okay, we have a well, we have, we have all kinds of complicated systems here. Some of you know that. And he has been taking care of these things. He spots stuff about to break. I love that talent. I don't know how you do that. With me, it's like, oh, no, it's bro. He's like, this could go any time, and so we need to. And he's proactively done stuff around here. He was here first thing this morning. He took, he took down the closed signs. He opened the gate. He made sure that everything. He's running around here like a madman. Sean Connolly. Couldn't have done it without him. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Stromat power washed the, the north side of this building over here by himself. That's quite a task. And all of you guys, all of you guys, I'll tell you, the six word sentence that people in my line of work treasure more than any, I think it's six words. What can I do, five words, to help? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What can I do to help? You have contacted me and others here relentlessly over the last 16 months. What do you need? What can I do? People have shown up. I don't even know. Say, I attended Creative Life 25, 30 years ago. Here's some money. You know, here's some money. We've needed money to keep the place going. You're in this room today because of money, because of the money that was given by people over this period of time. People who didn't know when we were going to reopen but knew we were still doing important work and wanted to contribute. And that's huge to us. That is just great. Please keep it up because we need a new air conditioner now, we found out, (laughs) after 16 months. Didn't bother us. We sat in here and sweated, but now we're hosts, you know, and so we have company. we got to do something about that. But uh, the people who have um, just really stepped up and supported the place, it's, it's awesome. And finally this. We pivoted on that 15th of March weekend to a technology that we were ill-equipped for. We all had like little pieces of information, okay? I have a smartphone and I consider myself technically advanced because I can master this thing. I can use an app, you know? And then there's Zoom and there's Facebook and there's streaming platforms that lead to Facebook and all the rest of this. And we scrambled and put all of this into place and got it set up and rolled it out there for you, for you who come here, for our members. 
And we thought, maybe somebody else will watch. Maybe somebody will be going through social media and come across our name and decide it's worth looking into. Well, let me tell you, they did, big time, big time. Every service that we film from here, we have viewers across the country. I've had some opportunities come my way to teach, not only within Creative Life, but to a larger audience. I have a class I'm doing now. This will be the, tomorrow night will be the third week of it. I got 42 students in four countries. One of them in Israel who is watching us at 2.30 in the morning, her time, engaging with the class. And 20 U.S. states, 20 U.S. states learning the science of mind. And it's not about me, and it's not about creative life, because on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night, they're watching some other center. They're taking some other class in this. They have multiple options for learning that were not present before, you know? And it used to be the case that when you were trained in religious science, people would ask you, who was your teacher? Because you were they were, you know, your mentor, and you were their student, and it was, you were geographically kind of isolated with them wherever you happened to be, unless you were fortunate enough to be in a community that had multiple of our centers. Now people are sampling from all over. You know, I gave a talk to our um, Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Kingston, Jamaica. I've got one coming up for Santa Fe, New Mexico, and they've been talking to us. And more and more, you're going to see us use this platform to bring in. You know, people sometimes say, well, Reverend so-and-so someplace, they're a wonderful teacher. We ought to have them in creative life. You know what that entails? Putting them on a plane, spending a lot of money, burning a lot of carbon, bringing them down here, putting them in a hotel, feeding them, schlepping them to and fro, and putting them on the stage, and then hoping you show up. Okay? Eliminate all of that, and boom, there they are. They're, they're the greatest teachers. There was on June, over Juneteenth weekend, I don't know if you saw this, on the CSL website, they had a discussion with 20 of the most eminent African American teachers that we have. People I am in awe of, Eloise Oliver at the top of the list, Dr. Eloise, but um, including Reverend John Scott from Jamaica, the fellow I worked with on that, you know. To get them and you and me and all of us some place to do this, huge ordeal to do it virtually so much, so much easier. So going forward, we're still going to have a center, thanks to you, because you wanted one, because you're paying for it, and here we are. And oh, by the way, a lot of spiritual centers, not just in our denomination, but globally, have shut down their physical location. You may know this. They've gone online entirely, sold off the property. You don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to hug a tree. We got memories here. <laughs> We've got cremains on the property. And that brings me to this. We've had some losses. We've got three memorial services coming up that have been postponed. Um, it's been a time. It was the best of time. I, I wrote a novel uh, during the shutdown. I call it A Tale of Two Centers. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was this, it was that, you know. But uh, we've lost some people. We've had some people move away. You heard Reverend Marsha, now in Washington State. About a quarter of our practitioners have moved out of the area. And we've had some people move off the planet. And we've had some family members of our people that we don't know move off the planet. So I was thinking about today and this talk. And, uh, and I thought, what am I going to wear? Did you think that this morning? Yes. What am I going to wear for the grand reopening? I see one hat, I think. Hats are good. Plumage. What am I going to wear? And if anybody else asks me if I can get them some ice cream, I'm going to yell. But anyway. I went to my closet, and I found this shirt. And it reminded me of a time, Halloween, a couple of years ago, around Halloween, here at Creative Life, all of, all of October is sort of, it's kind of who we are. We're Halloween people, 
<laughs> At an event a few Halloweens ago, I showed up wearing this shirt, and somebody else did too. <laughs> Bill Birch. And we said, why don't we have our names embroidered on here? <laughs> we can make these our uniforms at Creative Life. We lost Bill Birch this year. Bill was our Wednesday night music director. He was an MC. He was cast member of the shows, violinist par excellence. His beloved wife, Marty, preceded him. Now they're together. His, theirs is one of the memorial services coming up. Dick Schmelzkopf is another. Ellie Liggett is another. Uh, so I wear this in memory and honor of Bill because he would have, by God, been here today. If he had to be carried into this room, he would have been here today for this. And he is here with us in spirit. As every chair that is empty next to you is filled by a creative life person who has their attention turned this way in consciousness today as they celebrate our reopening. I've been getting texts and emails from various people, and, and, uh, and they're with us in this. So as far as the spiritual dimension of all of this, to get past the just kind of the stock taking of where we've been for the last 16 months, I just have one more uh, shout out to make. Um, when we closed down on that Monday in March of 2020, Two of our ministers said, our people need regular spiritual support. They need a check-in place where they can go on, uh, on their time and on their computer. And starting that Wednesday, it took them two days to get this set up. Two days, starting that Wednesday. And ever since, every single day of the week, Reverend Lisa Ryan, Reverend David Dewhurst, giving inspirational readings, messages on our Facebook page. That is huge. So I know some people might have thought it was glib to say, as we did in the early emails, you know, we've not shut down. We're just, the campus is closed right now. We have been more active really than ever, serving more people than ever over this 16 months. Now we get to blend it in with this community. And the spiritual point of that is simply this. There may be two centers right now, or so it looks. The people online, the people in the room, but there's one community. There's one community. And those people watching online, many of them want to make their way here, the people from out of state and stuff. And you want to meet them because they're extraordinary people. And we all want to get in one big circle and hug, and we will do that at some point. But this community is strong. This Creative Life community is strong. I wondered. I really did. Because back in January of 2020, we made a few changes, you know, to try to boost attendance and stuff. And I kind of had this conversation with myself for people still interested in this. Well, you are. You are. So we have redoubled our efforts to teach the science of mind. Okay, the spiritual component of this, so it, especially for those of you who have no idea what I've been talking about up to this point, you don't know who any of these people are. And you're wondering why you should care. The pillars of this temple, if you will, are regular, dedicated, spiritual practice, regular dedicated spiritual practice. If you will engage in regular dedicated spiritual practice, your life will be appreciably better than it was. I cannot promise you that all your problems will go away. Lift like the fog, you know. I can't promise that you'll be richer than Croesus. I can't promise that you'll be made young again and, and that the whole world will want to be your friend, but I can't promise you this. Your life will be significantly markedly, demonstrably better if you develop a regular spiritual practice. And if you really want to go for the gold, make it an idealistic one. Make it a sunlit one. Make it a light-hearted light, light, light one. Light-hearted light one. <laughs> Spirit, your spiritual practice. Not heavy and gloomy and morose. And oh God, I'm so sorry that of course you've let God down. You've let lots of people down. So have I. We do it. All right, get over it. It's <laughs> God loves you. Can't help it. And it's not just about you, God loving you. It isn't about, oh well, you know, I'm gonna give you a break. 
I'm going to love you. You're a mess, but I'm going to love you anyway because I'm, you know, God and all. God loves you because it can't help it because you are the experience that it is having in this world at this time by means of you. By means of you. And when you internalize that, you feel better about yourself. You're happier. You're more grounded. Stuff still happens. You still grieve. And you know what? The question comes up sometimes. People say, well, am I supposed to be happy all the time? Because if so, what do I do with grief? No. Happy is your backdrop. Happy is your chronic. Grief is your acute. And you know what? You'll actually be able to grieve better when you have a backdrop of happy. Because you won't make it all about yourself. This is something we've learned in the last 16 months where it's not all about myself. You know, where somebody dies and it's like, why did this happen to me? Well, it didn't. It happened to them. You know, it's, and if all of your um, recollections and kind of unhealed emotional stuff comes up over somebody else's suffering, how fully can you be there for them? Well, you kind of can't. You're sort of running your own thing, you know. But with a backdrop of happy, you can trust that you can give your heart to a situation and not be consumed by it. Not be consumed by it. There's another person in the room I have to acknowledge. Her name has not been called yet. She's a minister of this center. She's not under a letter of call, basically, because of red tape. But she's a, she's a minister of this center, wildly credentialed, just received her doctorate. Let us celebrate her for that. She's been a hospice chaplain this whole time. She's been working with COVID patients this whole time where she had to look through a window at them, okay? Reverend Deborah Morewood, right. you are a light on the planet. And how she serves, because I know Deborah. We've been, what, 20 years now? You know, we've been through classes. You've been a practitioner here. You've done your work. You've done your work to clear out inside yourself where you can be fully there for other people. And it's, it's not, death is not threatening to you. Death is not an outrage to you. Suffering is not like, oh, I can't deal with this. It's like, no, let me put my own needs and wants over here for just a moment while, you know, I fully direct myself. In other words, it makes us better humans. There's a guy I've been watching on a reaction, Jamel, catch Jamel on the reaction channel on, uh, on YouTube. He reacts to music, you know, this guy's wonderful. There's a shirt, has a whole line of products, says be a better human, be a better human. How you become a better human? You do your work, you do your spiritual work, you do your spiritual psychological work, work through the things within and see. So, you know, when all of this started, I got up and gave a talk, the first Sunday we went virtual only, and I said, I don't know what things are, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, some people are going to be better off, and some people are not going to be better off, and right now today somebody's better off than you are, and right now today you're better off than somebody else, and, and we don't know. And man, it's been through some twists and turns, and I still don't know where the world's heading. But I'm going to quote something that Deborah has as the footer on her emails about there is a thread. There is a thread that runs through all creation, never lose that thread. Never lose touch with that thread. That thread is your sanity. That thread is your spirituality. That connection, no matter how things look, no matter how crazy, no matter how many different conflicting opinions are coming our way about what this all means, never lose that thread. That's spiritual practice. You don't have to get on your knees to do it. You don't have to suffer and be miserable. You can stand in the light. I'll close with this because it's time to close with something. But there was a, I saw this great line and it said, so picture stained glass. We have some nice stained glass up in the other building which you'll get to see again eventually when we reopen that building. But Stained glass. You work in stained glass. You select the glass, the colors of glass, the pieces, and so on. You cut them to shape, you know. There's that, because uh, it's, uh, not sure exactly what metal that is. Someone know? Lead. lead? Good, lead. With some asbestos, no doubt, too. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, 
Mercury, yeah, Mercury, that's good, yeah. So you're assembling this stained glass, and, and so you got your lead, and you got your glass, and, and, uh, and you've decided on a design, you've decided on an outer shape, and here it is, and, it's, and you poured spirituality into it. You made angels, saints, you know, halos, all animals, Francis of Assisi, you know, birds on his shoulder, all this kind of thing. Got all this beautiful stuff, beautiful stained glass. It's only lacking one thing. Put it in the light. Put it in the light. Put it in a drawer. It's not stained glass. Put it in a drawer. I don't know what it is. It's an artifact, you know. But hold it up in the light. You are the radiant child of God. You are the beloved as you. But you've got to put yourself in the light. You've got to show it forth to the world. You've got to hold on to that thread. You've got to activate. You've got, as Roger Teal puts it, you've got to make yourself available. Make yourself available. And you're doing that right now. And now the world has reopened, not just, not just this place, but your favorite pub and your favorite bowling alley and your favorite movie theater and your favorite wherever it is you go. And you get to go around all these places and be the light. And be the light. And stand in the light say we're strong so looks like we made it looks like we made it this is the title of today's talk which is from a Barry Manilow song and that's the only line of it I know but it came to <laughs> came to my mind you got to be careful when you do this because the second line of songs are sometimes wrong I was going to do something from a Nirvana song I was telling Brian and the second line is like oh no oh no somebody <laughs> somebody will know this one but it looks like we made it I'm going to go further and say we did. We made it. We made it through. We made it through. And I wish I could tell you that this was the last thing that we're ever going to have to make it through in our lives. May this, please God, be the last global pandemic. Yet still in all, life changes. Changes in good ways, not just troubling ways. I mean, every time you you learn something, you have an opportunity to share it. Every time you get good at something, you have an opportunity to be put into a situation where you have to kind of learn everything all over again. So I can't tell you that the end of the testing, so to speak, the refining, like, like lead, is happening. It's going to stop. It's even going to slow down. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you you have what it takes because you are what it takes because there is a power greater than you are, right where you are. And we're going to talk about that power right now. There is one life. That life is spirit. That life is all the life there is. That life is my life right now. Now, I rattle off these words sometimes because they're familiar to me, but, man, they are loaded with meaning. One life. That life is spirit. That life is my life right now. That life is my life right now. It's not going to be my, my life when I learn enough or work off some karma. No, it's my life right now. And what's more, it's every other being's life that I encounter in this world, including those who have so completely forgotten it, including those who never seem to have known about it in the first place, that they may behave in ways that astonish me, everyone, is of this one life, including those great teachers and mystics and gurus of the ages who I look up to say, I can never be like that. But they drink at the same well. They draw their awareness from the same mind with a capital M, as do I. So I do, in fact, have what it takes. I am enough. And I have humility about this, because it is not of my own doing. As the great teacher said, it is not I, but the Father within who does the works. There is a power, and it's seeking expression. So I make myself available to it, to express itself fully, unrestrictedly through me for the greater good of all humankind and the glory of Almighty God, for this knowing and its manifestation and form. Everywhere I turn, I am so deeply grateful. I let it be now, and so it is. And so it is.
Before we come to giving time, um, a couple of things I would like to say. Number one, uh, Jesse did I thanked a lot of people up here. We want to thank Jesse for being here, for doing this. Yes, thank you so much for you and who you are and the message that you give us each and every week. You're such a blessing, and we really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Um, and a personal thank you from Lisa and I. We want to thank Reverend David Dewhurst yet again. With that being said, if it was not for him, the equipment that we have, being able to stream the way we do now so that you can have the best quality um, you know, broadcast possible, not only that, but the Zoom classes that we have, you know, he helps with all of those. He's done so much in the background with that that we really want to thank him. So thank you for that. And with that, now we come to giving time. I want to thank each and every one of you for your gifts, for your donations, for your support of us and this center and this message. And I invite you now to say with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all the good I am and have, all the good I give and receive. I am prosperous now, and so it is. Okay, here's where I admit I'm nervous. There are actual people in the room. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, seriously, the first time we heard you guys respond back to us, we all went, oh, and Danielle and I both had our backs to the room, so we didn't even see it happening. We went, um, they're people. We're not talking just to ourselves. Which, and now, I have been watching the comments online, and they've been very active online. So they, the community online is fantastic. We're happy to have you online. We're happy to have you in the room. We're thrilled to have you back. And we are thrilled to be able to continue to provide this online. And Jesse thanked a whole lot of people. And then Danielle mentioned the uh, equipment. And I can tell you, the iPad was a donation from Barb. The iRig, which is what helps to cut down on, so you guys don't have to be dead silent. It feeds the sound directly from the soundboard into the, uh, that was donated by David. Um, no. Farrier. <laughs> David Farrier donated that. It took us a little while to learn to use it. Uh, thank you, Melody. Yes. And then the, the laptop that we're using to, to manage the, the live stream was donated by David Dewhurst and Michael Levinson. So there are a whole lot of people who have had their fingers on this to, to be able to provide this. Um, I, David and I both live stream from the comfort of our homes in the during the week from our phones. <laughs> we don't have all this fancy equipment, but we don't need it. We don't need it. That was our spiritual practice. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna out myself and David right now. That live stream that we do was as much for us as it was for you. And we're committed to continuing doing it. So just because we're back in, perp back in person does not mean we're gonna stop doing those live streams. So you can catch me at 9 a.m. You can catch David at <laughs> 5. I've seen him anywhere from 4 to 10 o'clock at night. I have to get ready for work, so mine's pretty much at 9. Uh, so, but you can always scroll back and see us later, which is not what I'm here for. What I'm here is to close us out, to, to close out this sacred time together to remind you to carry this energy, this love, with you out into the world. We have been through an experience with a contagion that has not been pleasant. So I'm going to ask you now to take the contagion of love, of peace, of joy, because they are just as contagious. So go out and spread that. Spread love, spread peace, spread joy, spread harmony. And how do you do that? 
by being the authentic child of God that you are. So in that knowing, I know that there is one presence, one power, one love. I'm made up of that love, just as I know that each and every one of you are made up of that love. That love flows through us, in us, as us. We are literally the hands and feet of God. We are the loving heart of God. We are the listening ear of God. And we are the mouth of God. So we speak from our hearts. And we speak love. And we speak peace. And we speak healing. And this way, we create a world that works for everyone. A world where peace is offered, where comfort is offered, where healing happens. Healing happens at the molecular level, at the cellular level, at the community level, at the personal level at the world level, at the universe level. There is a perfect blueprint. There is an idea, God's idea. You are God's idea. Remember that. And I know this with all of the gratitude in my being. I know this with all of the love in my heart. And I am grateful for these people. I am grateful for this place. I am grateful for these musicians. I am grateful for this senior minister who has shepherded us through an experience and will continue to shepherd us through more. And I'm grateful for the tech team and I'm grateful for you. And I know this, and I release this, and I know it is so, and so it is. Say with me now, something wonderful is happening through me. Something wonderful is happening through me. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my mind. I feel it in my mind. I feel it in everything I am. I feel it in everything I am. I choose it. I trust it. I use it. And I love it. And I love it. So it is. And so it is.